All right, we're back for the second day and it's only 34 degrees today in here, not 42. So I'm sweating a lot less. And as you can see, I've sorted these together. I actually only had um, seven SOCs. So uh, I've got five of these boards left and I'm thinking I might keep that one that I was messing around with and one more is my original. And I'll give three of these boards away. If they work, you can have them. Um, I'll send you the specs or whatever. <clears throat> now, putting them together, um, essentially it all went really smoothly except for this one. I dropped it just before it set. So it's a little bit on the wonk. You can probably see here. Yeah, it's, it's a bit pissy. Uh, it's more obvious on the back. So I don't know if it's actually aligned right or if it's going to work. Uh, now I figure we'll grab one of those and one of those and we'll test them out. And then I'm just going to keep two of each. So I'll give away two of these uh, C3 minis and I'll give away one of these 8284s. Are they, sorry? Uh, 8684s. So I'll give away an 8684, maybe even the dead one, and two C3s, <coughs> plus three of these. Uh, at the end, I'll tell you how. So we'll make this quick, try to get into the competition. I'll turn that light down so it doesn't flash so much. And we'll have a look at what we're going to do. So I'll get this out the way. Get these out the way. And that one out the way too. Now, these ones I've marked slightly. Basically, the 3.3 and the ground I've marked, so I don't test those. And then that one is the enable pin to reset, so I've marked that slightly as well. The rest of them, ideally, I want to test if I can. So, first of all, let's start with the less sad one, see how that goes. We have some test headers that I've put along the back there. So, <clears throat> if we can actually see my data sheet in the corner, there we go. So we've got 3.3 ground, receive, transmit, 9, which you need for boot, uh, boot to flash mode, and then in for reset. So let's quickly solder some of these on with my trusty pine saw. And I'll just grab one more bit of loose wire that I'll attach to that IO9. There we go. So we can use that to reset. So let's get this over to the laptop and see if she blows up when I plug it in. So far, so good. Let's reset this, so I'll unplug it, gonna tie 9 to ground, just my finger, plug it back in, push button would be a great addition for that wouldn't it, I can even fit one on top there, so that should be booted, let's uh, see what Flash ID thinks, COM4, SP32C3, it's working as expected. So the next thing we want to do now is see if we can actually flash this with a demo uh, ESP home image that I've made. Now this is pre-compiled and what this has is uh, just a sequence that should flash all of the GPOs every three seconds. It's using the light strobe effect default on. So let's see if this flashes. Oh, didn't get enough status bytes. Alright, it is probably not actually in the right mode because of that paint. So what I'll do is I'll use the actual ground. It's not paint, sorry, it's uh, <clears throat> just art line marker. So let's see. No, so it's definitely not in boot mode now. I don't know then. To ground, connect, oh, 
it's not liking the SP32C3, so instead we'll use the ESP tool for that one. Alright, that's flashing now. So, I've downloaded this in legacy format. It should work with both. I'm hoping it works with this um, because most of the instructions now say to use the modern format. However, it seems like these ESP32C3s aren't liked by ESP Home Web. That's perfectly fine. We can flash it here. The one thing to remember, which I didn't say before, when you plug in the UART connections or the headers, uh, is to make sure you're in 3.3 volt mode, if that's an option. I've got a CP2104 that I got from Maker Fabs. I'll put a link below. There's heaps of different ones. This one uses silicon image chip. There's ones from Prolific and FTDI and whatnot. I prefer this. I find it most stable. But it's not for everyone. So, now that's flashed, let's get back to the device itself and do some testing. It's been reset by the internal counter, so we're going to have to tie onto ground here, which is going to be a little challenging. So I'm going to have to do it manually. So first of all, we want to make sure that these pins at the bottom are working. Yep, that's showing me my 3.3 volts. That is excellent. So now, from... Oh, I can't remember whether I'm pulling high or pulling low by default. Didn't think that one through. But essentially, we should be reading our voltage to ground on each of these pins every three seconds. It is. It's just flickering, though, for some reason. And backwards, but... There you go, 3.3. It's definitely there. It might just be all on. I might not have got the strobe bit right. 3.3. Let's, uh, back in ESP Home. This should have joined my Wi-Fi now, so I'll go back to ESP Home, and we'll see what that's doing.